Good morning, brethren, sisters, Church of the Living God. It's 3.23 a.m., my time here. <laughs> Had a rough night, unfortunately, but got something that I would like to speak with you about. Uh, so please get your authorized version of the scriptures. The last video that was uploaded on this channel was a documentary called The Seeds of Death, Lies of Genetically Modified Organisms. It's a video exposing, showing the dangers of genetically modified organisms, GMO foods, that are rampant here in America. Um, the truth is, the data is, that ever since GMOs have been introduced into our country, autism, diabetes, uh, even dementia, Alzheimer's, allergies, and whatnot, uh, not to mention all the food preservatives that they put into our toxic food here in America, the evidence strongly suggests and shows and proves that genetically modified organisms, GMO food, is toxic. And unlike other nations on Earth, um, we here in America have really no restrictions besides little labels about non-GMO and GMO or whatever. Uh, but other nations are very strict and have uh, very strict guidelines and regulations against GMO foods. Uh, they do exist in uh, other nations, but other nations besides America are a little bit more smarter when it comes to that. Uh, why is that? Because you got to remember that America is a Jesuit nation. The Jesuits hate us Americans, okay? And a way, any way that they can kill us um, does them good. And again, when looking into GMOs, um, the links to autism, diabetes, Alzheimer's, dementia, certain kinds of cancers, um, uh, bowel issues, and all kinds of stuff, allergies, and whatever and whatnot, um, they're very, very dangerous, and they are very, very unhealthy to eat. The unfortunate thing is that we here in America, we cannot get away from it because, unlike other nations, like I said, um, GMOs are rife here in America. And, um, you know, are you to trust our government to tell you which is which? No. But having knowledge on the facts of this situation um, are beneficial. And that video was uploaded to inform you people about the dangers of GMOs, okay? Um, especially here in America. Like I said, they are in other nations, but other nations have more strict guidelines against them as do uh, where we do not, okay? But um, in, that, in the description of that video, I said, maybe this documentary, something around these lines, maybe this documentary will finally convince you naysayers to go organic once, for, and once and for all. There are people out there who, number one, deny that GMOs are dangerous, and number two, there are those out there who not only deny they are dangerous, but support them and uplift them, saying that genetically modified foods is the future for the world's hunger problem. And that comment, that what I said in the description box, was aimed at those who, you know, number one, it's like, oh, well, yeah, I should, maybe, you know, because of the evidence, okay? Um, that's why I said that, you know, there are those out there who support it, who, um, who applaud it, okay? And you got to keep in mind, people, uh, in the kingdom of heaven, the thousand-year reign of our Lord Jesus Christ on earth from Jerusalem, everything we eat is going to be organic, it really is. And when it comes to that, um, you know, the cows, the chickens, and all that kind of stuff, watch the video. I'll, I'll link it in the description box. Um, it's very scary. Uh, Grass-fed um, animals and um, animals fed, uh, as to your knowledge, you know, local farms and whatnot. That's the way to go. 
farmers markets that's the way to go to go organic as much as possible because unfortunately we here in America we're not going to get away from it unlike other nations okay uh, like I said the documentary speaks for itself um, but here's the thing that comment like I said was for those who you know support GMOs or think flippantly about them um, in no in no way, shape, or form was I judging other people who ate, who eat GMOs because guess what? We, my wife and I, we try to uh, live healthier because of both of our health problems. Unfortunately, we are not going to get away from GMOs. So we here in America, we need to do the best we can to stay away from GMOs, okay? But I don't judge people in what they eat. And if you, for some reason, saw the video and or just that thing in the description box and said, well, you're judging people on what they eat. Uh, no. No. <laughs> no. No, no, no. No, okay. Go to Colossians. <laughs> chapter 2, okay? Colossians chapter 2. Verses 16 on to verse 19. Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. Let no man beguile you of your reward in a voluntary humility of worshiping and worshiping and worshiping of angels, excuse me, intruding into those things which he hath not seen, vainly puffed up by his fleshly mind, and not holding the head, from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increaseth with the increase of God. So you're right. Yes, we are not to judge people for what they eat. Uh, me uploading that video and that comment is was in no way me judging people for what they eat. Okay? That'd be sin. Yeah. That would be sin. Guess what? I used to be a vegan. Okay? Um, I used to be. Even as a vegan, I never judged, you know. Look, you can eat whatever you want to eat. Why is that? First Timothy chapter 4. First Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. I've covered this many times before. But now for a gross misunderstanding and a rash action... Um, I'm going to, we're going to go through it again very quickly. 1 Timothy chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Now the Spirit uh, speaketh expressly, that in the latter times some shall depart from the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils, speaking lies and hypocrisy, having their conscience seared with a hot iron, forbidding to marry, and con commanding to abstain from meats, which God hath created to be received with thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. Okay? So the ultimate number one for th verse three, um, forbidding to marry, Roman Catholicism, and commanding to abstain from meats, um, Lent, but the whole vegan thing, okay? And also you look into the 2030 agenda um, where animals have rights, getting people away from eating meat. Okay? No. No, so not only is this for Catholicism, but for her many daughters. For the many daughters of the whore, Mystery Babylon the Great, the mother of harlots and abominations of the earth, Roman Catholicism. Okay? And number, uh, verse 4. For every creature of God, every creature of God is good 
and nothing to be refused if it be received with thanksgiving. Why? For it is sanctified by the word of God and prayer. I have never, will ever, discriminate or judge people in what they eat, sir. Let's go to Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Verses 1 on to verse 4. Him that is weak in the faith receive ye, but not to doubtful disputations. For one believeth that he may eat all things, another who is weak, another who is weak, big part, brethren, another who is weak, eateth herbs, weak in the faith. Specifically, give, put this in your mind, someone who is a Jew, who came from a kosher background, knowing that today we of the Church of the Living God, because of what we just looked at, we can eat anything we want. If you want to stay kosher, fine, knock yourself out. You want to eat pork, fine, knock yourself out. And make yourself a big old fat, greasy cheeseburger with bacon and eggs and slobber it up with mayonnaise. Go for it. Go for it. Knock yourself out. Knock yourself out. I've addressed this many, many times before. Many times. Many, many times. Okay? But if someone who is a Jew who uh, is recently saved and they come to you, don't, don't abuse your liberty. Have respect unto your weaker brother who is right now struggling with, well, should I stay kosher? Or then you take them to First Timothy. It's like, you know, the dispensation changed. Talk to them about dispensations and wait for him, for the Lord to, you know, to assure him that it's okay. All right? We're not supposed to judge people in what they eat. I never have or never will, sir. Verse 3. Let not him that eateth despise him that eateth not. And let not him which eateth not judge him that eateth. For God hath received him. Who art thou that judgest another man's servant? To his own master he standeth or falleth. Yea, he shall be holden up. For God is able to make him stand. You check my videos. I have never, ever, ever said anything about judging people and what they eat. I've spoken against it. I never have, never will. Okay? You might not eat some, be eating something I might not like, but hey, God bless you. You go ahead and eat whatever you want. I've never, I've never questioned that. I've never taught against that. I've never judged anyone for what they eat. Never, sir. Never. Never. Okay? Now, the catching away. The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble. Let's go to 2 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy, not 1 Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verses 15 on to verse 9, 19, excuse me. Study to shew thyself approved unto God, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. Be dis dispensational in the way you read scripture. The Lord will guide you into rightly dividing the word of truth, okay? But shun profane and vain babblings, for they will increase unto more ungodliness. Godliness is separation. Ungodliness is making yourself a part of the world. Okay? And their word will eat as doth a canker, of whom is Hymenius and Philetus, whom concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already and overthrow the faith of some. Verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. Having this seal. Hinge that. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Look at verse 18. Who concerning the truth have erred, saying the resurrection, the catching away, is past already, and overthroweth, overthrow the faith of some. 
saying the resurrection is passed already, the catching away, it's already happened. And overthrowing the faith of some. Meaning, meaning what? A novice, a babe. Somebody's like, the resurrection already happened, you missed it. A babe could be like, I'm not saved, I missed it because I'm not saved. <gasps> Or someone saying, oh, it's already happened and we're in the millennial kingdom. <laughs> millennial kingdom is not in the scriptures, by the way. It's the kingdom of heaven. I'm using their terms for the, just for an example, okay? But uh, yeah, it's already happened. This is the millennial kingdom or something like that. Uh, there's a heresy out there where it says that the uh, catching away already happened something like 2,000 years ago. And we're living right now in this whatever. I forget what that's called. Somebody I, I ran into before used to have believed that. I forget what his name was, but it's not important. Okay? But see, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthroweth the faith of some. Verse 19. Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his, and let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity. Now, very quickly, I personally believe and hope <laughs> that the catching away in accordance to Song of Solomon and several other verse, verses of Scripture, that the catching away will be happening sometime in spring. Okay, read uh, Song of Solomon chapter 2, okay? Um, I believe that it will be in the spring. That's what I personally believe, okay? I could be wrong, okay? I could be wrong. Uh, the catching away with the times we are living in right now could happen at any moment, okay? I hope that it, ca it happens next spring. I really do. Um, I hope that it happens before 2025 because uh, according to a military website, the Jesuits have planned a whole bunch of death here for America. About uh, almost half of the population is to, they are projecting to be gone by 2025. Look what's happening, okay? Um, I hope we are gonna be gone for that. Um, I really do. I hope we are not going to be here um, by 2030. Um, I don't believe so. I could be wrong, okay? I could be wrong. But see, I preach to you an urgency. Why? Because of the times we live in, people, okay? The catching away could happen at any moment. I personally, because of the scriptures, um, do believe it's going to happen in the springtime. But you know what? We don't know. We don't know. It could happen at any time, okay? Look at what is happening right now, okay? The mark of the beast technology is already out there, okay? If we get caught up, okay, um, they could have that third temple rebuilt very quickly, okay? Everything is set, everything is in place. Look at what, hap what is happening in Israel right now. Remember, Israel is the temperature gauge, okay? But see, looking at verse 18, which um, verse 17, calling, saying, my word is a canker. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, and their word will eat as doth a canker of whom is Hymenius and Philetus whom concerning the truth have heard, saying the resurrection is past already. Okay, so, if the catching away doesn't happen next spring, okay, you're not going to hear me say to you that it's already ha passed, okay? No, because I'm saved, born again, converted, a new creature in Christ Jesus of the Church of the Living God. I'm going up. Whether I sleep or am awake, I'm going up, okay? I'm going up. I, me and my wife, I know we're saved, okay? I know we're saved. Beg your pardon. Okay? I know we're going up, all right? 
if it doesn't happen this spring, three years, five years, ten years, what, you think I'm going to be saying to people uh, that, oh, it's already happened, it was a, what, it was a lie or something? No, no, of course not. But for the babe, for you babes out there, okay, we're, we're going to come back to this, okay? We're going to come back to this. But um, First Thessalonians, First Thessalonians, okay? Chapter 4. First Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 under verse 18. But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. Sleep in Jesus, what does that mean? Those who are dead. Okay? For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord, that we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. Okay? For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them, with them, okay, in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. Okay? Now, go to 1 Corinthians. Okay? What you accused me of is absurd. And unfortunately, I know that your problem is with me only. I know that. I know that. I know that. And since I cannot talk to you privately. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 on to verse 58. Behold, I shew you a mystery. We shall not all sleep but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye, a blink, okay? At the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality. Then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But, God, but thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. The victory, meaning... Look at verse 55. O death, where is thy sting? See, we have hope. We have the blessed hope. Whether we wake or sleep, whether we are alive or dead, when our Lord says, come up hither, we're all going up. Those who are dead in Christ and those who are alive and remain. We're all going up. Okay? Okay? The dead shall rise. Okay? We're all going up. You are to have hope, okay? If it doesn't happen next year or even this year, three years, five years, disappointing, but do not lose hope. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. See verse 55, O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? And then verse 57, But thanks be to God, which give us, giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable always abounding in the work of the Lord for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord that is why I am so when I preach to you that is why I'm so adamant because you look about what's going on right now um, the catching away is coming soon I believe when I don't know 
uh, next spring, three, five, ten, I don't know, but it's coming soon. Look at what's going on. We can't have that much longer to go, okay? But we are to have hope, brethren. You babes, let me, let me, okay, let me re uh, show you something, okay? Let me show you something. Go to Ephesians, okay? Go to Ephesians, chapter 1. Ephesians, chapter 1. Verses 12 on to verse 14. Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 12 on to verse 14. That we should be to the praise of his glory who first trusted in Christ, and whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed, ye were sealed with that Holy Spirit of promise, which is the earnest of our inheritance until the redemption of the purchased possession unto the praise of his glory. Now look, if you're a babe in Christ, you are recently saved, this tells you what? That you are sealed unto the day of redemption. You are purchased with God's blood. You are bought with the price. You belong to him. Okay? You are his purchased possession. And whether you sleep or whether you're awake, when he calls, come up hither, we're going up. Okay? Whether it happen next spring, three, five, or ten years. Okay? Okay? Because now look at verse 13. In whom ye also trusted, after that ye heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, in whom also after that ye believed ye were sealed with that spirit of promise. Okay? Okay? Go now, go back to 1 Thessalonians. Oh no, I'm sorry, 2 Timothy chapter 2. Verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. See, you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You're sealed, we just looked at it, until the day of redemption. Okay? What's going to separate you from the love of Christ? Okay? Hold on. Nevertheless, verse 19, Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. And let everyone that nameth the name of Christ depart from iniquity, having the seal. The Lord knoweth those who are his. Why? Because you are sealed until the day of redemption. That circumcision made without hands is within you. Okay? Okay, so babe, uh, babe in Christ, there ain't nothing wrong with being a babe. Um, whether you wake or sleep, you're going up. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You're going up, okay? Here's another ver uh, here's another portion of scripture, Romans chapter eight, okay? Romans chapter eight, verses thirty-five on to verse thirty-nine. No, 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 no. Verse thirty-three on to verse thirty-nine. Who shall lay anything to the charge of God's elect? Elect, God elected the way of the cross. Okay? And you come to God on his terms, broken of your self-righteousness, contrite godly sorrow because it's your fault that he died, and in the fear of the Lord you call upon his name and may he save you. Okay? But the elect is talking about those who go to him via the cross, the way of the cross, brokenness and contrition. Someone go up another way, they're a thief and a robber. Okay? The election right there is talking about the church of the living God. Okay? Who shall lay anything to the charge of God that's elect? It is God that justifieth. Who is he that condemneth? It is Christ that died, yea, rather that is risen again. Who is even at the right hand of God, who also maketh intercession for us? Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation, or distress, or persecution, or famine, or nakedness, or peril, or peril, or sword? As it is written, for thy sake we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. 
For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So what that means unto you, uh, dear babes in Jesus Christ, if you come to him broken and contrite and in fear of the Lord, you call upon the name of the Lord and he save you, guess what? You're once saved, always saved. Your destination is fixed. Okay? Your destination is fixed. What is your destination? Okay? To be with the Lord. Go to Titus chapter 2. Titus chapter 2, verses 11 on to verse 15. Okay? For the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. Yes, the salvation of our Lord Jesus Christ is available for all, but not everybody is going to come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of the Lord, call upon the name of the Lord, okay? Not everybody's going to do that, but it's there for everybody. But not everybody is going to come on his terms, because narrow is the way, but yet broad is the way that leadeth unto destruction, okay? Teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly not lusts, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly, separate in this present world, looking for the blessed, looking for that blessed hope. What is that blessed hope? The redemption of the purchased possession. And the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior Jesus Christ. Who, uh, beg your pardon, brethren. Beg your pardon, okay. Who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify unto himself a, pe a peculiar people zealous of good works. These things speak and exhort and rebuke with all authority. Let no man despise thee. We, of the church of the living God, we have hope. If it doesn't come next spring, three, five, ten years, yes, you can be like, oh, but we still have hope. Hebrews chapter 11, just one verse. Chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. We're going to hear our names come up hither. If it doesn't happen uh, next spring, it will be disappointing. But you know what? We're saved by hope. We're looking for that blessed hope. Okay, it doesn't happen next spring. It doesn't happen in three, five, ten years. But there's still hope. Okay? See, <laughs> in Timothy here, dear friend, okay, in Timothy, verse, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 18, who concerning the truth have erred, saying that the resurrection is past already, and overthrow the faith of some. Okay? Hymenius and Philetus were saying that, look, it's already happened. So, either one, there is no catching away of the church of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, or, number two, well, you're not saved. You missed it. We missed it. Or something like that, okay? Passed already. Okay? If you're a babe in Christ, look. You need, look, if it doesn't happen next year, three, five, ten years, um, you still have hope. Because you are sealed unto the day of redemption. Okay? Nevertheless, the foundation of God standeth sure, having this seal. The Lord knoweth them that are his. Okay? <laughs> if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus, you're sealed. You're going up no matter what. Okay? You're going up. 
All right. And like I said, I preach a sense of urgency because of what is happening. And like I said, I do believe, according to the scriptures, that um, I do believe that the catching away will happen in the springtime. If it doesn't, then guess what? My understanding of it was in error. But nevertheless, it could happen at any time. See, my understanding of when is not the significance. The significance is, guess what? If you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you're a new creature in Christ Jesus, Jesus, guess what there, friend? You're going to escape God's wrath. God's wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. Whether you live or die, you're going to be with the Lord. And yes, I do hope it's next spring. But if it doesn't happen, thy will be done. I will be done okay it can be disheartening but look if you're a babe in Christ um, don't let it overthrow overthrow your faith because I have never once I have never once said anything like this that it has already passed or you're not saved or we're in the what no no no. And it's not a fear of anything. I want to be with Jesus. Don't you? Don't you? I do. <laughs> I really do. And also go to 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 verses 1 on to verse 11. Okay? But of the times and seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. A thief in the night comes unawares when no one's expecting it. Okay? For when they shall say peace and safety, they're saying that today, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as to veil upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. But ye, brethren, are not in darkness that that day should overtake you as a thief. Ye are all children of light and the children of the day. We are not of the night nor of darkness. Therefore let us not sleep as do others, but let us watch and be sober. For they that sleep, sleep in the night, and they that be drunken are drunken in the night. But let us who are of the day be sober, putting on the breastplate of faith and love, and for an helmet, the hope of salvation. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. Here's a promise for you. You babes in Christ, here's a promise for you. For God hath not appointed us to wrath. God's wrath is the time of Jacob's trouble. But to obtain salvation by our Lord Jesus Christ, who died for us, that whether we wake or sleep, we should live together with him. Wherefore, comfort yourselves together. There, wherefore comfort yourselves together and edify one another even as also ye do as, a, as my best friend says um, you know I know where I'm going when it's going to happen I, if it happens great today great if not the Lord's will be done yes amen amen Okay, and you know what, brethren, Church of the Living God, I, I will humble myself here. If I have gotten carried away with that a little bit um, about, you know, hoping that it's next year in the spring or whatever, if I've gotten carried away with that, please forgive me. I repent. Please forgive me. But there again, there again, I am not preaching to people that well it's already passed or anything like that I'm not doing that no no remember if you are saved born again converted of the church of the living God okay you're going up and should we concentrate solely on when it's going to happen no no but I mean we can see things happening okay mark of the beast technology is already out there okay 
steel of the chisel with poniard and everything that they're coming out with they're coming out with it slowly and surely okay look at what's happening in israel look what's happening in australia okay these are perilous times these are the last days okay you have to remember this brethren okay you have to remember this uh second timothy chapter three Verses 1 on to verse 5. This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good. Is that not happening today? Traitors, heady, high-minded, lovers of pleasures, more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. From such, turn away. These times, we're in perilous times. <laughs> These are the last days before the catching away, okay? It's coming soon. Soon mean, do we have another hundred years? Oh, Lord Jesus, I hope not. Okay? Brethren, again, if I've gotten a little carried, or if I seem to have been uh, gotten carried away when when it's going to happen, uh, please forgive me. I repent. The when is it going to happen is not as important as the fact that it is going to happen. So if I've, if I've gotten carried away with that, I repent. Please forgive me. I'm sorry. But nevertheless, that's not going to change my urgency in speaking unto you. Not at all. Because what if it happens today? What if you die today? Hmm? We can't use these times as an excuse to sit back and do nothing. We need to be out there fighting. Okay? We need to be out there fighting. Okay, and to sit back and and use the catching away as an excuse. Well, I'm just going to sit here and be idle and wait for it. No, 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 no. Our Lord Jesus Christ would not have you to be idle, not at all. Are you idle? Are you idle? My wife and I, we try not to be. <laughs> The Lord keeps us from being idle, to be honest with you. Okay? If you're saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you are sealed until the day of redemption. You cannot become unsealed. It's his salvation, not your own. You don't get it because you saved yourself by your own belief. Okay? No. No. Whether you wake or sleep, you're going to be with the Lord. Okay? The blessed hope. So, please, brethren, and you babes out there, Church of the Living God, like I said, again, I hope it's this spring. I do. I hope it's before 2025. I definitely hope it's before 2030. I believe and hope that we won't be here by then. I, I don't believe we will. Guess what? Guess what? Guess what? If I'm wrong about that, I'm wrong about that. I've made many mistakes before. Okay? But if it doesn't happen this year or, or next spring, brethren, Church of the Living God, you babes in Christ, you're sealed until the day of redemption. You have nothing to fear. You will be forever with the Lord. Don't forget that. And if I have neglected to comfort you, the Church of the Living God, on that, please forgive me. And on that, I do thank you. Okay? On that, I quite disagree with you, with your, impl with your implications. Uh, but thank you. 
And now, one more, one more piece of business here. One more piece of business. Romans chapter 16. Verses 17 on to verse 20. Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly, and by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. For your obedience is come abroad unto all men. I am glad, therefore, on your behalf, but yet I would have you wise unto that which is good, and simple concerning evil. Okay? And the God of peace shall bruise Satan under your feet shortly. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Amen. Now, idolatry. Idolatry is not just relegated to statues or pictures of lions or whatever you want to do. it. It is also idolatry of men. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. There are those out there who I have vehement disagree, uh, disagreements with. There are those out there who think, uh, who have called me an idiot. Okay? And there are those out there who want me to make videos about one who has already had a multitude of videos made against him. A multitude. There are some people out there who make a certain individual their primary focus of their scorn and make YouTube channels about him, follow him wherever he goes, okay? Okay? Of course, I'm speaking about Brian Denlinger, okay? Um, I have my disagreements with him. And yes, he thinks I'm an idiot. Okay, that's fine. All right. But like I've said, you do a YouTube search here on YouTube. <laughs> Put his name in and just scroll down. Just scroll down. Many people have made videos against him. Okay. Many people have made videos against him calling him lost and so on and so forth and whatnot and whatnot. Um, and you want me to add myself to that fray? When you yourself have quoted even people who are known enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, but yet they were right. Huh? You want me to be added to that fray? I don't think so. I don't think so. I don't think so. And that's what we just addre addressed is the heart of the matter. Okay, that is the heart of the matter. Like I said, I have my disagreements with Brian Denlinger. He thinks I'm an idiot. Okay? That's fine. Fine. But like I said, you, I mean, look at his ending. Look at the people. They go over to Rumble to follow him to attack him. Okay? Okay? And here on YouTube, you will not find, this is what they did. You know, guys like everybody's favorite YouTube Jesuit. Um, this is what they did to overwrite the uh, algorithms to where they would find their videos against Brian Denlinger. Okay? Um, that has been well trodden. And I'm not going to go down that path. If you got a problem with that, Check, do the search, and find any video you want, and watch it, okay? 
I'm not going to be added to that. Okay? Because many people, like I said, there are people out there who make just their own channels specifically to attack that man. You got the Jesuits out there. Through Kamala Harris and her front person, Smoking Joe, slowly instituting these Nazi mandates over the steel of the Jesuit Punyard. You got a famine, an orchestrated famine coming, okay? People will be hungry, people will be scared, and people are going to be angry, okay? That's all I got to say about that. And that's all I will say about that. Because like I said, I cannot speak, I cannot bring this matter up in private because you have a problem with me. And you know what? That's fine. I. It's very sad. It's very sad. But it is obvious. Your problem is not with anyone else but with me. And I know what you did. You were saying with your, you know, those who are in sin rebuke before everyone. I get what you were doing. But you were wrong, sir. You were wrong. And, hey, about the uh, catching away? Yes. Okay. 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 If I have given to anyone the impression of losing hope in the catching away... If I have, if I have, um, I repent. It was not something that I am aware of, but if I did, I am sorry. I repent of it, and please forgive me of that, okay? If I've made any of you, <laughs> if I've made any of you lose hope in the catching away, That's more or less what you said. That is more or less what you said. If I have, please forgive me. If I have. If I have. So, anyway, um, just wanted, wanted to make this video too for comfort unto to you, the babes in Christ Jesus, too. Because, um, you know, like I said, I do hope that it's in the springtime, the catching away. Um, I do hope it's before 2025, and I hope we don't make it to 2030, okay? Like I said, I've already shared my beliefs for that. But if we're still here, people, don't let that be a source for you to lose hope because we the Lord knows who are his because we have the seal of the Holy Ghost and the Lord is that spirit our Lord lives within us we are his purchased possession no one can take us out of his hand we're his we're gonna be going home soon don't lose hope in that and again if I've caused any of you to lose hope. If I have, please forgive me. I repent. It's never my intention. I speak to you out of urgency because I see what's coming. And I know what's coming. Because why? Why? Because we have scriptures to warn us of what's coming. And I'm going to tell you, I'm not going to back off on my urgency. Okay? But there again, there again, if I've made any of you lose hope in the catch, hey, seriously, please forgive me and I repent. 
if I have. It was never my intent. And uh, like I've said, Lord, if I give me eyes to see, if this is something I've done, please forgive me. I repent and, you know, I take full ownership of it. But I don't, I, never mind, never mind. It is what it is. What's done is done. Okay, what's done is done. I'm not going to add myself to the number. Okay, I'm not going to do that. Okay, I'm not going to do that. The Lord has called me to preach the truth of the scriptures. That's what I'm going to do. How about you? How about you? It's very unfortunate. Like I said, my wife was devastated. She really was. But, like I told her, you know, babe, they, these things happen. These things happen. Um, the thing about judging people about what they eat, come on. It's so unfortunate that down here we're not going to be able to get to know each other better. Like I said, respect your decision. And I'll see you at the judgment seat of Christ. Hope you're not behind me, though. That's going to be it for this video, brethren. Don't ever lose hope with what's going on here because if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, you're going home. Take comfort in that. I love you. We love you and thank you so much for your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. Thank you for all of those of you who have um, not turned their backs on us. Thank you. Thank you. May the Lord reward you. And uh, we will see you in the next video.